In this video, we're going to be taking a look at implementing a quick and dirty calendar application. So you can see here we have a very basic calendar, if I full screen this, it goes from Monday to Sunday and it covers the entire month of August. You can see we have the grayed out dates for September down here and we have some links to different consultations that we uh, have scheduled. I have a multi-day event here or multi-day meeting or I think I call them consultations. Uh, and then I have two individual meetings on Monday today. So this is sort of what we're going to be implementing and we'll be doing it using the simple calendar gem created by Chris from GoRails and we'll be using the bootstrap version of the gem. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's get started. First things first, let's just add bootstrap real quick so we can come over to Google, search for bootstrap five. And the reason why we're using bootstrap is just because it's specifically mentioned in here that if you use bootstrap, it has some custom stylings. If you don't use Bootstrap, you can just import the style sheet manually. Uh, we're not going to be doing this step where you add the require simple calendar to your application.css. So if that's something you want to do, just go ahead and do that. In here, we're just going to be using Bootstrap because uh, it's a little faster. We'll come over to the Explorer and I will show you how to customize this, of course. So you can pretty much omit all of this if you'd like to. Uh, we're going to come on into views, layouts, application.html.erb, and then in here below the style sheet link tag, we're going to paste the CSS for Bootstrap. We'll then grab the bundle for JavaScript and paste it below the JavaScript tag. We can then save this, and we're pretty much done in the app.html file. Next, we need to generate, uh, or we need to add this uh, gem to our gem file. So we have the simple calendar gem. So what we can do is just type bundle add, and then we're just going to do a bundle add for the simple calendar gem, which I'm trying to uh, backspace right now. So we'll just say bundle add simple underscore calendar. We'll hit enter, that'll add it to our gem file. You can of course manually add it and run a bundle install if you'd prefer. So you can see here we're using simple calendar version 2.4.3. Once we have that, we then need to generate a migration or generate a scaffold, I guess. Uh, because we need to create like our meetings or our events or whatever we're planning on using. In this case, I'm going to call them consultations just so it's a bit easier to see uh, what the model is that I'm using. So I'm just going to type Rails G scaffold. I'm going to call it consultation. I'm going to give each one a title. I'll give them a description of type text. And then we're going to give them a start underscore time of type date time. And then this is optional, but we're going to use a end time of type date time. And the reason why we use the end time here is because if I search for end time, uh, it, it should say somewhere that uh, optionally you can use the end time attribute, uh, which enables multi-day event rendering. So that's just the thing that allows us to do these three day weekends, for example, where we have a meeting or a consultation that spans from August 5th to August 7th. So that's why we need the end time. So once we have this and my terminal stops bugging out, we can hit enter and this will generate the migration for us. Uh, that takes care of that. Let's go ahead and run a rails db colon migrate command to migrate the database. And then let's come into our uh, config folder and our routes.rb. And then inside of here, we just need to create a root path. For this, I'm gonna create a home uh, controller or a pages controller. So I'll just type rails g controller, I'll hit F11. I'll call the controller pages and I'll give it a home action just so we have a home page to work with. Once that's done, I'll type Rails us to start the server and hit F11 to exit out of here. We can come into our routes file and we'll just set the root to be the pages controller and the home action. We can then get rid of this get pages home because nobody cares. Go ahead and save that. Come over here, I'll refresh and then I'll get rid of our lovely calendar. Now we can come over and we can start actually styling things. So let's come into our pages and our home page. And in our home page, we're just very quickly going to add in some basic CSS uh, just to make this look a bit better. So I'm going to say this has a container because we're using Bootstrap now. That'll center this. I'll then give this a MT-5 to give it a margin top of five. And then we'll give it a text-center to center the text inside of this div. That'll just apply to everything. Once we have that, we can then go ahead and create our calendar. So we're just going to start by creating a month calendar. And there are several options in here. So there's a month calendar. There's also a week calendar that allows you to go by uh, on a week by week basis. You can also do custom length. So like right here, it has a calendar with four days if that's what you'd like, or maybe you want five days for your work week, something like that. In this case, we're just going to use a month calendar. It takes in some parentheses. 
And the main thing that it needs to take in here is a list of events. So our events here are gonna be just a collection of things. I'm gonna call them at consultations. So we need to actually uh, initialize these consultations in the controller, but first let's just do a do block and and then inside of this uh, block right here, what we wanna do for now is we'll just grab the date and we can actually get rid of the events real quick and we'll just use the date for now. So I'll just do exactly this, a div with a class of day and we'll call date.day and that just gives us the number uh, or the, the day stamp or whatever you wanna call it. So the, the number of the day. We can get rid of the day specifically and just use the date and that gives us the year, month, day and you sort of get the idea of what we're doing here. So our date is just gonna be the actual date that is the headline of the calendar, whatever you wanna call it. We can then use our events where we'll pass in at consultations. And then when we save this, this will of course throw an error because at consultations is not defined. So let's come into our controllers and our pages controller. And then inside of our pages controller, uh, we can initialize the consultations. And this is a little bit involved, but it's not too bad. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say at consultations equals consultation. And we can't just do dot all. So instead what we wanna do is grab the where, and then we want to do a where, where the start underscore time is the time dot now dot beginning underscore of underscore month. And then we wanna grab the dot beginning underscore of underscore week dot dot. And then we need to finish this and I'm just gonna try and move this down here so we can at least read this. So let me hit F11 actually. So we grab the beginning of the month, beginning of the week, and we go until the time dot now, end of month, end of week. Then we can go ahead and save this. That gives us our start time. Once we have that, we now have our collection here. Oops, our collection here, which means we can refresh. Now, of course, there's nothing being displayed here. Uh, but we can, of course, go to previous months or the next month and we'll grab them as appropriate. So that's pretty neat. Uh, but what I'd like to do now is come over to the actual consultations path, which has our uh, new consultation button. So if we click on that and let's actually come into our Explorer and our consultations and our form. Uh, actually, let's not come into our form. Let's come into the new consultation maybe. And just for right now, I'm just gonna do this for the sake of my sanity. We're just gonna wrap the entire new consultation in a container so that it's a bit more in the middle. Now let's give this a, uh, start, a title. We'll call this, I don't know, my first meeting. And we'll just say, uh, talk about stuff. And you can see here the first quality of life improvement that uh, I noticed is we have a proper date picker. So you can click on this and nothing interesting will happen. But if you click on the little calendar button, you can see it pops out a proper date picker. So this will make our life a little bit easier. Now it is August uh, 1st. You're kind of just disappeared on me. Uh, but I'm going to create a meeting or a consultation for 9 a.m. today, which is when the video will release, the one you're watching. So we have a 9 a.m. consultation-ish. That looks like 9.18. And then we'll just go until, I guess, 10 a.m. And we can scroll up to 00, maybe make it a bit more organized. And I'll just change this to 00 by typing it. So now we have from 9 until 10 a.m. So I'm going to go ahead and create the consultation. You'll see nothing really changes here. We can go back to consultations. Uh, it just has the basic date there. But now if we go to the root path, you'll see we still don't have anything. The reason for that is if we come over to the home, we're only rendering the date right now. What I'd like to do is render the actual consultations. So to do that, you can either call this a meeting, call this a consultation, whatever you'd like. I'm gonna call it a consultations. So what we're doing here, it's a little bit confusing, but basically your events are your uh, at consultations. And then for each day, you have a set of consultations. Because remember, you can have multiple meetings on the same day, right? So in this case, we're grabbing consultations plural here. And then after we have our day, we can then add in some additional information. So we come down here and then we just say consultations.each 
do. And then here is where we have the individual meeting or the individual consultation, right? And then in here, we can just do something simple, I guess. Let's do a dot card dash header, and we'll just create a bootstrap card for this. We can then do a dot card dash title maybe. And then inside of this card title, we can do a consultation title. Let's save that, hit F11, and then refresh. So here you can see we have our first meeting. Now let's change this maybe. Let's make this a link to the consultation title and then a link to the consultation. We'll save that, refresh, and now this is a link. So we can click on this and it takes us to the actual meeting. So that's pretty neat. Now maybe we want to add some additional information into our calendar. Let's keep going. And after we do the card header, we'll do the card body. We can then close the uh, card body and the card text here. And I'll go ahead and save this. So inside of this P tag, we'll just throw in the description for this uh, event or this meeting. That adds that block of text. And then the final thing we can do is we can create a card footer. Then we can go ahead and close the card footer and we can close the div. Now inside of this card text, we can do a from block. And the from block here is going to be uh, a little bit extra. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say consultation dot start time dot strf time. And then inside of this strf time, we need to format our string. Now, if you don't know how to do this off the top of your head, uh, you don't have to just copy what I'm doing. You can actually look for strf time formatter tools on Google, and you can just click on any of these. You can see I click on them quite frequently. Let's check this first one. So this is strftime.net. I actually really like this website. What you can do here is just pick how you want your meeting to be displayed. So let's actually do this. Let's do a percent A, which is Monday, Monday, and then percent B. And I'm just copying from my notes here, but this is just based on the buttons I clicked here. So Monday on August 1st at uh, the year 2022, we then have at percent I, which is 03 colon, and that's just me literally typing colon. I could also type ASDF and it would just put those letters in there. So at percent I percent M, so 0, 0.23, and then percent P, which is a lowercase p that gives us at uh, this time AM, which is when I'm recording this video. So we'll just copy this. We can come over here to our STRF time uh, call, and we can just paste that inside of our string. We can then go ahead and save that, refresh this, and it'll get upset at us because I didn't close my Ruby code. So let me just do that real quick. We can then save it, refresh. And now you can see from Monday on the 1st of August, 2022 at 9 a.m. And that's just coming from this little string right here. So the meeting goes from this time and then we're gonna do the same thing. So we'll just paste it. And we'll say that it goes to the consultation.end time. And then we can save that as well. And now you have your meeting being planned out here. Now, maybe you want to customize what your calendar looks like, uh, or you want to create like multi-day long meetings. Multi-day long meetings, you just change the date to uh, have multiple days. So I'll just come in here, I'll click new consultation, test case. I'll make it start, I don't know, let's go from Tuesday, and then let's go to the 5th of August, I guess. I'll click create consultation, go back. We'll go back to the homepage. And now you can see here, we have meetings on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And these tell you when they start and when they end. So we have that, but now let's make the calendar look a little bit different, I guess, because we need something else to do here. So to do this, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go over to the GitHub page, which has a whole bunch of helpful stuff. Uh, but the main thing that it has in here is a customize section. And the customize section tells us that we can generate the views for the simple calendar. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll stop the server, clear the console, and we'll just type Rails G, and we want this to be simple underscore calendar colon views. We'll go ahead and run that. And that creates four different helpers for us. So let's come over to the Explorer, simple calendar, and you now have the ability to customize your uh, calendar.html, which has a whole bunch of stuff in it, your month calendar, and your week calendar. 
And the reason why this is really nice is if we took take a look at the month calendar, for example, you can see there's a whole bunch of different classes here that you can then customize. The other thing that this has is if I find it somewhere, it has the entire custom CSS class uh, list for you right here, which you can copy. And if you copy this, you can then come into your application or assets, uh, style sheets, application.css, and you can just paste this in here. Now this is in SCSS format, so we're gonna cut this out, come down here, paste it, and then we're gonna tab this all over one so that everything's formatted. Once we have this, I can then, uh, I mean, I can save this and just run the server real quick. Um, nothing will change, of course, but if we come in here and we customize this, and I'm actually gonna let Bootstrap custom, or GitHub Copilot customize this, you can see this stuff start to change as it does some auto completions. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out because we don't need to see all of the details, and then I'm gonna refresh. And now we have a little border around it and things look a bit more formatted. I'm gonna go ahead and just do some auto complete and let uh, GitHub Copilot decide what it wants to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and auto complete this and it's probably gonna set these days to have different colors. So let me refresh. Now we have some weird formatting going on, but we'll just keep going and see what happens. So you get an idea for what this is all changing. Uh, I think all these days are gonna be the same except for day six is gonna be red again because it's trying to make the weekends look a certain way. There we go. Let's go ahead and refresh. So now the weekends are red and the rest of the days are, uh, I guess, black. We can then change the today color. This probably won't do anything. We can change past colors. That also won't do anything, uh, but we should be able to change future colors. That'll change to black. And you can see these change from red to black. So that's pretty neat. If we go back to previous, these are all grayed out. So that's nice. Now let's go into the start date, make this white. We can change the previous month, the next month, we can change the current month, and then we can change the has events. And if we change all of that and refresh, you'll see that the uh, dates start to look a bit more customized. Now this header here looks a little bit strange. So let's come into our, where is it? Our home.html and our header here, it looks a little bit off. And that's because this actually needs to be a H5 and not a div. So let's change that real quick. Refresh the page. And now our day here, it looks a little bit off. So if we get rid of the day, it goes back to normal. So I'm guessing the CSS for the day is a little bit wonky where it's trying to change the sizing of this. I'm not really sure why the width is set to such a weird amount. Get rid of the width, save that, and now our day looks a bit more normal. And you get the idea. So this allows you to customize everything and then you can even add like multiple meetings on the same days, etc. So, I mean, hopefully this was helpful. I know that a lot of people have been asking about calendars and there's really nothing up to date, but I think that the simple calendar gem from Chris is fantastic. Uh, I would also go take a look at Chris's videos on the topic. They might be from a previous version of Rails, but they're still pretty useful and still, uh, I feel, uh, applicable to learning. But yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this allows you to do whatever you need with calendars, uh, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.